Interactivity in Excel means the user does something that then results in a change in Excel, either a change in the display of data or navigation to another location, or possibly even execution of some type of command, like updating values or connections. This type of interactivity is generally considered a two-step process. It includes the control with which the user will interact and creating, configuring, or otherwise designating the action that should occur related to that control. In reality, we could do these two things in either order. We'll create the control, then create the action and assign it to the control. So let's talk about controls. If we move to the last option on the ribbon, we can click or tap the Developer tab. It contains a controls group, and there are a variety of options. Depending on the resolution of your monitor, you may see the options already, or you may need to display the Insert option. We're looking for the group called Form Controls. It's important to work with Form Controls for what we want to do instead of ActiveX Controls. There's nothing necessarily wrong with ActiveX Controls, but they're more difficult to configure and require more resources to process and store. Form Controls work very well directly on worksheets and are fast and easy to configure. We insert controls from this group and option, and we're going to create a button first, but there are actually nine controls that we can choose from, and I think we should take just a minute to talk about them. Combo boxes are often referred to as drop-down lists. They allow users to choose from a series of predefined options that saves typing and limits choices. When this control is used, the selected option returns a value of true, while those not selected return a value of false. I think you can already see how Excel can use that information to do a variety of things. Think if functions. Now there are some relatives to these controls, or maybe we should say a group or family of them. Here we have the first one, but there are also a couple more, called a combo list, as well as a combo dropdown. We aren't going to talk about all of the intricacies of each one, but that's why you should play with these a little bit if you're not used to the types of form controls that may be available. Now the next type we have is a checkbox. Checkboxes are fairly straightforward, but remember that they allow for more than one choice to be made. A checked option again sets its value to true. Otherwise, if it's unchecked, it's false. They can be useful for allowing users to select which criteria or values they want. For example, selecting from a series of product categories or regions where they may want to see or use more than one value. Next, we see a control that has an up and a down arrow. This is called a spinner control, and it allows a user to increment or decrement numbers. We might use a spinner to designate how many weeks or months we want to display in one of our dashboard visualizations, or how many top or bottom values to display, creating an interactive filter. Next, we find the list box. A list box is similar to a combo box, except it's specified height and not a dropdown. It has up and down arrows that you can scroll through to see additional options, if appropriate and we can often make multiple selections by holding the control key while we click on different options. A list box could be used to select multiple locations, multiple employees, multiple categories, or if a user wants to include multiple times of day or days of the week in results. Of course, it can also be used to just select one value as well. Now we get to something that looks like a little round circle. This is actually called an option button. We use an option button when we have two or more values, each that we want represented by the small circle. When one is selected, any other is deselected, so only one choice can be made. That's what differentiates an option button from a checkbox. When we talk about option buttons, though, we kind of need to go to the next kind of control, which is a group box. A group box is placed around option groups, whether there's two or 20 or 200 of them, to designate that they are all part of the same group and only one choice within the box can be made within the group. Of course, it makes sense that we can also add labels. Labels are just what we think they are, and they're used to label the controls. Don't confuse that with a text field, which is actually a field into which we would manually type a value or information we want to use. Moving back to the left for just a couple seconds, because we skipped over it, is a control, again, with up and down arrows. This is different from the spinner that we saw on the top row. This is called a scroll bar. Now hang on just a second, because a scroll bar may not be exactly what we think. We're used to calling the up and down arrows with a bar between that we use to scroll a page up and down or left and right a scroll bar. And actually, it is. 
This is similar, except it scrolls a value by dragging, not a screen or a worksheet. That covers each of them. Creating a control from here is simple. We simply click or tap on the control we want, and then click or tap on the worksheet. Because we created a button, it automatically opened and wanted to know what macro we wanted to assign to it. We're going to go ahead and close this out, and we'll talk specifically about how to configure a button in another video. We want to talk briefly, though, about how to configure a control. Every control has properties, but the properties for each is different. For example, to configure a dropdown, we'd need to define the options that should be presented, whereas a checkbox wouldn't require that type of information. The easiest way to configure any type of control is to right click and choose Format Control. In the dialog that appears, we can set or configure how it looks and behaves. Because this is a button, it doesn't have a lot of options, but other types of controls will have one or more tabs that control all of these features. We'll go ahead and simply click or tap Cancel. Controls allow you to add elements that will provide interactivity to your dashboard. They can all be found on the Developer tab. We want to use Form Controls and not ActiveX. Dashboards are certainly functional without them, but it's the interactivity that allows users to be engaged with their information as well as personalize it to their specific needs so they get what they need and you don't have to create multiple variations of the same data.